This video is going to be a possession style review of the Lions opening drive, which I thought was just a gem against the Vikings on Sunday. Ben Johnson established some things, but also I thought it was brilliant and maybe a little bit understated. We don't ever get information, and I'm going to rail about this all in the offseason. We don't get information about personnel groups on screen during broadcasts. The moment that someone does that, maybe Amazon Prime does it, I don't know. I don't watch Thursday Night Football unless the Ravens and Lions are involved. But um, switching personnel groups on every play, Ben Johnson elicited the different looks that the Vikings were going to show. I know that down and distance and location on the field changes those things and, and game situation as well. But he switched personnel groups, I think, on the first four or maybe five plays. Had the Vikings substituting guys in and out. And look, I understand on third and 14, if you go 12 personnel, you're still going to get the Vikings or any defense's nickel defense. You're still going to get a 4-2-5 personnel look. Coverage-wise, you know, structure, they may change things up, but you're still going to get four down linemen or two outside linebackers and two interior linemen, whatever. It's a 4-2-5. But Ben Johnson checked off a bunch of boxes on the first possession. How are they going to line up to this? How are they going to defend that? How are they going to defend that over there? Additionally, the Lions established that we're, we can move the ball on you. The Vikings defense did not live up to their, their recent standard of play, let's put it that way, uh, being the number one defense in the league since week six, I think, in terms of points allowed per game. The Lions shredded them on four different possessions of 13 plays or more. Where I come from and the defenses that I was involved in, which nowhere near the NFL level, that's being shredded. If someone gets four scoring drives on you of 13 plays or more, it's not like they hit two or three big plays. It's not like they had one 12-play drive and then got a short field three or four times. Yes, the Lions did get a short field once, and oh, by the way, they scored a touchdown on that one too. This was a mauling. And this was a masterpiece by Ben Johnson, if you ask me. Let's get to the film. We'll go through every play on the first possession. Uh, Ten personnel here. Interesting. I think it was Josh in our Discord mentioned it during the game, and I didn't notice it on the first play, to be honest with you. You got two wide receivers down to the bottom and two wide receivers up to the top. I think that's Josh Reynolds and DPJ up there. <clears throat> kind of your classic uh, in-and-out route by the uh, stacked release. Of the Lions. And Jared Goff takes advantage of this stuff brilliantly. The ball, one of the pictures I used on the front, the ball kind of looks weird if you take a still shot of Jared Goff at a certain moment. It may do so with other quarterbacks as well, but I definitely notice it with Jared Goff. When I go look for pictures to use for videos, every week there's one of him right at that point in his throwing motion where the ball kind of seems to be facing, quote, a weird angle. But in any case, you got Reynolds on this deeper in cut, wide open. 10 personnel. Who uses 10 personnel in this day and age? I think they tried to go to it again later on in the game and called a timeout before a critical third down. So very next play. Again, second play of the game, first quarter. And you can see they go 11 personnel. So they're switching out one of the tight ends, bringing Laporta on, and then taking off one of the receivers. I think uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Inconsequential in terms of the, the game, but what have they done? They've gained information. 11 personnel, the Vikings are responding with one edge defender in a stand-up position to the weak side. I think that's Hunter down here who wins this matchup with Laporta. Strong safety rolled up to the boundary, so a very aggressive look. A 6-1, if you will. Really, it's a 5-1, and the strong safety rolled up to the boundary. Different personnel group on the third play as well. 12 personnel. And they switch sides, so tight end trade, well, two tight end trade. This is a second and nine, third play of the game. And you've got a different group on the field. Offensively, in terms of 12 personnel, different group on the field defensively as well. Most of the core is the same. Don't get me wrong, inside linebackers, the DB structure stays the same. But against 12 personnel, the Vikings were three inside linebacker. Look, 44 is up there, uh, apex to the field outside the two tight ends. And then again, strong safety to the boundary. I talked about this one in a review uh, film study I put out yesterday where basically the Vikings are wasting players on the backside here. From a conceptual standpoint, it almost seemed like wherever the strong safety was, Harrison Smith, that's where Ben Johnson ended up running the play. Maybe the design of it was for the tight ends to trade. Uh, maybe Goff called it. I don't know. Didn't look like there was any check there for me. But this is the play that I highlighted um, in the reaction video, and then additionally um, in a film study video uh, Monday, I believe it's Monday at this point, I've lost track of the days, where Montgomery and Gibbs are both just bouncing it off tackle. 
the Vikings are in over front, so you got a three technique, two the tight end side, two tight ends here. Yeah, one technique, shade, whatever you want to call it. Hunter is a five backside, and then your nine technique is 98 over here. The guy that got hurt, unfortunately, later in the game. Outside zone, off tackle, Laporta and Mitchell do a nice job just staying on their guys. They're not overwhelming people, but winning at the point of attack in the, in the manner that a tight end should, especially when, in the case of Mitchell, you get help from Sewell initially. I did not think the Vikings inside linebackers played very well at all. Maybe a part of it is the, the multiple personnel groups, the different formations that Ben Johnson showed, uh, particularly in this first drive. You're talking about third play of the game, third different personnel grouping, so the defense is having to shuttle in and out. I understand there's people in the football world that want everything to be no huddle. I get it. I've been a part of a no huddle offense before myself. But in this case, I really love the fact that they were switching personnel groups and forcing the Vikings to shuttle guys in and out, then get their call, get up to the line. Now, fourth play here. I think this is brilliant. You do have... A skipper on the field, so it's Jumbo 12. Fourth play, fourth different personnel grouping. Even though it's 12 personnel, just like the play before, now skipper is on and Mitchell is off. What do you notice about the flow of the play? Goff isn't getting up there and surveying anything. They're not giving the Vikings time. They're not only changing personnel groups. Clearly, you know, changing formations as well. That's that's a given. But they're changing the snap count. And here, fourth play, fourth different personnel grouping, quick count. Get up to the line. This is a first and ten, by the way, for Gibbs to the downside of the screen, the weak side. By going jumbo 12, what they've done is they've elicited, <clears throat> you know, what I guess is the Vikings' base defense here, 3-4 look. This is the Will linebacker, 44, to the Twins. And because of the quick snap, he's not over there in any position to get out into the flats. Who's supposed to get out into the flats? I'm sure that if there's Vikings fans or or people that you know pay attention to the Vikings team, like we all pay attention to the Lions, and I also pay attention to the Ravens, they talk about you know some type of coverage mix-up. No one in the flats have to give Ben Johnson, Jared Goff, too credit because they have two tight ends on the field. They knew they were going to get some type of base defense look. As soon as Harrison Smith is walked up, there's just a problem down here to the boundary. Numbers-wise, it's going to be difficult to play here without some one of those three guys being responsible for the flats. I do think the inside linebacker is, but coverage-wise doesn't look cool to me at all. Looks like a three-deep, two-under, where this guy has no work at all, so he's not you know in a deep alignment because there's no receiver to cover over there. Goff gets rid of it quick, eight yards. You know, there's probably people that are more savvy in terms of explaining it than I am. I just think there's an added level of brilliance on this play that you're in a fourth different personnel grouping, and Goff is told to get up there, snap the ball quick, throw it to Gibbs. To me, this is manipulation. To me, this is we understand how you're going to line up. We've seen it on film. We've given you three different things to look for on the previous three plays, 16-yard pass to Reynolds on the first snap, 10-yard run by Montgomery on the third snap, and here an 8-yard completion to Jameer Gibbs. So fifth play now, second and two. Uh, failed play, by the way, 11 personnel. So again, you've gone back to 11 personnel, which we saw on the second play of the game, and running the football. Now, the Vikings are really good at this. Did see this on film, this spike inside by a three technique. I think this is 91. He's going to spike inside as Jonah Jackson steps to the downside of our screen to, to the left. That's where the run concept is supposed to go. So that's spiking inside. If you get your pad level below, or in this case equivalent with Jonah Jackson, and execute the rip, you can get into an inside gap and disrupt the whole thing. I do like that Goff, excuse me, Ben Johnson established the, the Z-hide with St. Brown running off into the flats here. They're trying to occupy someone on the edge or maybe get an inside linebacker stepping in this way. And they use that play to great effect against the Broncos, or that motion, excuse me. Really, it's post-snap, so I guess I can get away with calling it motion. But Jonah Jackson beat, per se, tackle for loss on a second and two, creates a third and five. And I thought this one was an amazing play. Third and five here, obviously 11 personnel. You do have a, a flex alignment, two by two. St. Brown going to motion all the way across. And I love the route combination up there. I love the concept, I guess I should say. It's a third and five, three minutes into the game. 
Jamison Williams is being used on more of these shorter routes. Some of you in comment section for a, a month or so, I co-signed it as well. We're like, hey, I'd like to see Jamison Williams used on you know, some of these drag routes, some of these underneath stuff, out routes. Here you got it, and you got it later on in this drive as well. Williams into the flats. St. Brown going to sit down from the other side. Laporta is going to sit down and hold Harrison Smith there and basically creates a ton of space for St. Brown against what I would call like a quarter split field type coverage up to the top of the screen. Brilliant job by Goff as well. I think I need to cover this. On the play, there appears to be – Hunter played a whale of a game. I'm not sure that his stats necessarily reflect it, but when you watch the film, dude's a badass. He gets to the quarterback. Credit Goff, man, being able to step up away from it, deliver the throw – to St. Brown. This might be the one that one of the pictures, this might be the play that one of the pictures comes from in terms of Goff's, the ball being pointed at a weird angle at a certain instant when um, when a snapshot is taken. But snapshots aren't always a, a great representation of football. But there's the spin move by Hunter. Goff waiting for it to develop. Complimentary route by Laporta is going to sit down somewhere in here, hold Harrison Smith, create more of a gap for St. Brown to sit inside of. Awesome play. I think 14 or 15 yards on a third and five. There's a lot more that I could cover over the course of the offensive game. And, you know, maybe I'll get to more of it Wednesday. I'm going to be traveling a little bit this week. Uh, but this drive I thought was amazing. Now, you do have a penalty on Khalif Raymond here, and it's an accurate call. People railed about the penalty against the Chiefs receiver a couple of weeks ago for being on the line. He, he's on. I mean, this is an obvious call. St. Bra- I mean, excuse me, uh, Raymond surprises me a little bit. I do really like the concept on this first and 10, 11 personnel. So you've got all this stuff happening. And again, the Vikings are off kilter. I think this is Harrison Smith to the boundary, blitzing off the edge again, maybe responsible for the back if he releases there, just outflanked to the field many times in this video, including the third and five that you just saw where St. Brown basically had no resistance. Fortunately for the Vikings, this is callback. This was a, a 17-yard gain to Laporta. So it creates a first and 15. Jumbo 12. And I think it's a great job by one of the D tackles for the Vikings. Looks like 97. Right here. Uh, Jackson is working up the left guard. He's working up the second level. So 97 is able to push pole down with the center win against him, and get a tackle for a very short gain on a first and 15. So a little bit ominous there. We're four minutes into the game now, 11 minutes left in the first quarter. A little bit ominous because it creates a second and 12. And then this one, first of all, it's ridiculous that this is not counted as a first down, and um, the Lions had to run a play to be granted a first down. Horrible officiating in that moment. I didn't think the officiating was as bad as we've seen it uh, different times during the season, but sticks blitz zero. So... Brian Flores, the defensive coordinator for the Vikings, got six or seven guys lined up at the line of scrimmage, going to overwhelm you uh, with potential blitzers. I don't think I show you the end zone angle, so my explanation here will be somewhat incomplete. But you've got no coverage technique by these guys generally. I'm not talking about on this play specifically, but usually when you see this, they're all just looking at the quarterback. And wherever the quarterback looks first and pulls the pin on the grenade, they're going to break now. Uh, I was continuously frustrated by the Ravens' inability to, to attack this successfully since 2021 when Brian Flores was the defense coordinator in Miami. So another layer of this that you typically get is people dropping out. What they're normally reading is they're reading the center guard guard, and if those guys step to them, so if they were to step this way, then this player here would drop back out. And then, excuse me, I did that backwards, sorry. If If they step this way, the rule would be if you if they step to you on the interior, then you drop out. These guys have the same read, but it's the opposite. If they step away from you, then go, because that's going to be the domino effect over here in the, the way that I drew it up with the interior guys stepping in this direction. Now, the Lions do it <clears throat> the opposite way. Laporta helps on the downside against Hunter, and you've got a mass of bodies in there. Creates enough time, a great t- uh, great job by golf, if you ask me, of not panicking at all. It's important against Sticks Blitz Zero, you know, don't panic. You're going to get hit. Huge moment, second and 12 for 11 yards. It should be a 12-yard game. This is awful. We're, we're in the NFL in um, 2023 with all the replay that we've got, and we can't get that call right. So third and one play that shouldn't have been run at all, and 12 personnel again. 
different play because you motion uh, Laporta across. Penny Sewell gets decked by the inside linebacker. Just kind of cross block scheme with Jamison Williams. And then Laporta is going to block the edge defender out. So he's going to try to expand him to the top of the screen. Montgomery does get four yards. Really soft edge there uh, to the right side. I thought you got a lot of good things going on. Right guard doing a great job against uh, Hunter right here. I think it's Glasgow. Maybe I'll give you the end zone angle. So my apologies, I don't. So we're now down to a first and 10. I think you've got Laporta in the flats here to the left. Jamison Williams, if you throw the ball like now, then you've got Jamison Williams You know, on this timing stop here. Again, a short route for Jamison Williams. Laporta had chipped 98, slips out into the flats. Golf had already locked into St. Brown, decided you know, to throw the ball out of bounds. So good decision in that it didn't create a negative yardage play. Second and 10. I think we're now on the um, 10th play of the drive. 11 personnel with Laporta on the backside. And this is going to be uh, Jamison Williams to the downside for 12 yards. I didn't think this was a fumble live, but when you see the end zone angle, you can see that it clearly is. But I do enjoy the fact that he's being used on shorter routes. Because he can make people miss. Super athletic. If 24 isn't there and 24 had forced a fumble earlier in the game on Gibbs and you see him uh, try to force a fumble here on uh, Jamison Williams, I like that Raymond is running away from the flow here. Basically smash with a with an out route by Williams. Credit golf, man. Getting rid of the ball quick. Underneath, letting a playmaker, letting an athlete make plays. Make two people miss. Does fumble the football. Fortunately, it goes out of bounds, but he gets a first down. End zone angle, same play. Credit to the offensive line, man. All these blitzers, all this pressure. There was a moment, maybe second quarter, a couple of possessions in a row where the pressure did seem to have an effect on the offense. Otherwise, I thought it was non-existent. I do believe the Vikings had two sacks. I may be wrong there, but certainly not this overwhelming defensive pressure that uh, they were touted as and that you did see occasionally on film. Credit to the Lions offensive line. So creates a first and goal from the four. And man, like Ben Johnson is hard headed. Dan Campbell is hard headed. I mean that in a good way. This is 12 personnel, first and goal from the four. Uh Montgomery. Downhill for two. Hunter with the tackle. Like I said, played a whale of a game. Guy's a monster. Right here, lined up against the right tackle. 12 personnel, bunch closed. So tight and nobody to the downside. Laporta blocking his tail off uh, Effort from an effort standpoint. Second and goal from the two. Montgomery again for one out of 12 personnel. Hunter on the tackle. Now this is a little bit weird because <clears throat> Decker takes him on. And then two people run into Decker's legs that kind of collapses him. Not saying that Hunter isn't going to be in good position already. To make the play, he's he's in here. Decker is falling down. That's why you can't really see his helmet. You'll get the end zone angle in a moment. Gets a tackle. Ragnow, great effort trying to push Montgomery in. So right here, Decker's going to step 299, and, and his feet get rolled, not necessarily rolled up on, but he collapses after impact by one or two of his teammates. You can see here, 44 is crashing down inside. Were it not for those guys, you know, running into him, maybe Decker can stay on him, or maybe you could say, maybe we'd like Montgomery to hit this thing downhill. But you got a D-tackle flashing across his face. Just an absolute win all the way across the board for the Vikings D-line. At this point, I don't know what you're thinking. Third and goal from the one coming up. Two runs that didn't get in the end zone. I'm not going to call them uns failed runs. Unsuccessful in terms of scoring a touchdown. And they go jumbo 23. You have to admire the commitment to be who you are in this moment. First drive, and I think that's that's part of the uh, part of the decision here. First drive. We're on the road. We're here to win a division title. We're not here to get a field goal. We're not here to try to score an 11 personnel shotgun, throwing the ball. We're going to be who we are, and they were. It's interesting to me as well that Craig Reynolds is in the game at fullback. Jumbo 22, so you've got Jumbo 23, excuse me, tight end which is Skipper, tight end Laporta, tight end Mitchell, and then Reynolds and Montgomery in the game. Punch this thing in. Reynolds is trying to get after it. 
don't get me wrong, 40 is unblocked. 97 has folded off. But Montgomery, great short yardage back, if you ask me. Man, I'm so blessed as a content creator and somebody who gets to watch a lot of football. I get to watch two sh- great short yardage backs, and both fan bases probably will not like this comparison, but you can both be wrong. Uh, Gus Edwards is a all-time great short yardage back for the Ravens. He always has been, and David Montgomery hasn't been in the league uh, necessarily as long to be called that, but I think he's a really exceptional short yardage back. Understands, hey, let me just get downhill here. Let me essentially dive and get underneath of these guys to get in the end zone. Ragnow and Jackson are a combo in this guy. You, theoretically, you could say this is a, a chop block because you got a low block on a guy who's already engaged, but I do think Jonah Jackson kind of fell there. He is going low. He's going low, but I think he just falls because Decker runs into his foot. It's one of those situations. I've seen that many times before at the level of football that I coached where a kid falls down because one of his teammates engages him, and then we get called for a penalty, chop block in that situation. Uh, In any case, that was the first drive. I love the opening, the first five plays, switching personnel groups, and I love the finish. Third goal from the one, I suspect that even if – they have been unsuccessful and not scored on that run you just saw by Montgomery that Ben Johnson and Dan Campbell might have done the same thing on the very next play. Let me know what you guys think of the video, the way I, I went through each play. I know that that gets somewhat time-consuming for you as the uh, viewer, but I feel like in this case it allows us to see the flow of the play calls and maybe understand the why. Because, look, these coaches are so smart. During the game they're making these decisions – decisions instantly that I feel like personally I can only probably explain 40% of it to you after two hours or, or maybe an hour and a half of watching the film myself. So they're just so prepared and on top of things and making adjustments constantly. In this case, Ben Johnson was one step ahead of that Vikings defense. Hell, actually he's probably two or three steps ahead, and I think the first drive shows that. Appreciate you guys' time.